there and welcome to another Dave Does video and today uh, we're going to go through just some of my guitars. Uh, so some of some videos I've done recently some people have asked me about some of the guitars and wanted to get a bit of a rig uh, rundown. So as far as my actual kind of computer setup uh, etc I just use Cubase 8 Essentials um, or Elements uh use guitar rig 5 for effects and processing and amp amp, amp emulation uh and a few other things like uh easy drummer along with a v drums roland uh actual kit for playing uh, and then the rest of it is all basically just guitars now i like to collect guitars i don't like to spend a huge amount of money on them um i'm a true believer that each guitar kind of gives you a certain vibe some guitars you pick up and you get no vibe whatsoever and you never use them some just give you this constant kind of cool certain vibe whether it's a bluesy vibe sometimes it's a metal vibe uh sometimes it might be a bit of a jazz feel to it so they all kind of have different things plus you've got different pickups different string gauges uh you've got different fret lengths um some some are standard some are baritone you've got lots of different things on guitars that will give you different influences so i thought i'd share a few of mine today so and a little bit of about where i got them why i got them uh and i've set up a recording just so that they're all going to be on exactly the same i'm going to use a distortion setting because pretty much everything i do will be distortion but they're all going to have exactly the same distortion exactly the same levels etc so you can kind of see how each one is slightly different so uh i've got to make sure the peak level or the input level is the same otherwise some depending on the pickups we've got will uh, blow it will make it really over distorted etc so anyway first one we have so this is it's from gear for music uh it's kind of an explorer shaped body i can't actually remember what this one was called what series this one was uh, and I got it on a whim. Uh, this was just as the lockdown kind of went into effect. And it's, a, it's one of those weird things that you kind of look for guitars and stuff on, or you're just browsing guitars on things like eBay and stuff like that. And the next thing you know, you suddenly get uh, inundated with adverts for guitars on Facebook. And this was one of the ones that came up. Now, I have already got a Gear for Music uh, guitar. It's like a Telecaster one. And it wasn't amazing. It's okay. Um... What I remember about it was that the pickups were really low output, so you ended up having to put a lot more input into it just to kind of get a reasonable tone. Uh, and it's fairly similar on this, so it's got a lot. It's, it, the counterbalance is, is it basically is just not very well balanced as a guitar. Um, so you end up having to have all the weight is on the neck when you're playing. So you end up having to use your arm to actually hold it. There's no kind of even balance it hasn't been weighted uh, up into this point and to kind of give you an even balance it's not got that pickup wise very generic standard sort of six string uh humbuckers uh and this is kind of how it sounds quite liked the the actual body effects so I, I like the wood fit i think it's a cap i don't think this is a full natural body um i think it's made up of different bits of wood it, although it has got a bit of weight to it so it could be a full body who knows it's quite nice it's got a cool look to it and i kind of plan for this one in the future it's just got to sit literally a freeway switch and a volume so there's no tone or anything like that is i'm thinking with this one i might Swap out the pickups, do something different with them. Uh, maybe put a battery pack into it, put some, maybe an 8160 set in, maybe like a James Hetfield set. Uh, neck, 
it's all right and it's actually quite a nice satin finish on it so it's kind of cool from that point of view but yeah it's it's an okay guitar uh more for cosmetics and it may just become a wall piece in the long run so that's it so that's my little gear for your music uh explorer style guitar i'm gonna rest him up against mr zombie here he's gonna hold it over there okay so i'm gonna try and think of an order of what to do these in so if i go Let's do this one. Okay, so when uh, about five, six years ago, I decided to buy a kit guitar uh, and build a kit guitar from scratch, which was interesting as I have no experience in doing so. So I bought a Telecaster kit, uh, and this is basically what came out of it. Um, I wanted to do, you can kind of see a little bit in the light that there is some sort of engravings. And what I'd basically done is I'd taken loads of images from my old band, Nothing Gained, um, some of them back and I basically transferred them into stencils and I engraved it but never I didn't engrave it deep enough so by the time I then sanded everything back it kind of only had a real faint images um, I didn't have the right screw sets for the pick guard so I ended up having random screws uh, I did swap out the generic pickup so I put in some iron gear uh, Texas hot rails I think they were called um, and they got put in uh, and it fits this is a nice -ish guitar I kind of messed up the headstock I've kind of went for this kind of butt nose headstock with like these finger groove kind of going around it uh, I don't know why I did that I just, just kind of liked it I kind of thought the idea was kind of cool and I mean the action generally is okay but it's a very rough and ready guitar it would never be something you'd ever sell because no one would want to buy it but this is how this one sounds it's on a middle pickup so both are on both single coils and that is my little telecaster but it was a nice guitar it was basically i was made unemployed and uh i needed something to do as a little bit of a project while looking for work and stuff and so i decided to build a guitar uh, and that's my little telecast. Doesn't get used uh, really at all for anything. It's just kind of a, a, one of those mess around ones. Uh, right, so what else we got in here? This one's more of a recent one. So this guy on Facebook, so Alan George, if you know of him, uh, he basically gets guitars from, sorry, uh, he gets guitars from China. <laughs> Uh, get something imported over and they're basically they are what they are they're built in China come over like this one here so this has been d done to look basically like a PRS uh, it's got the PRS style inlays it's made by a brand called there you go Ersi 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 and it's it's not a bad guitar again low output humbuckers so fairly generic kind of humbuckers i bought it because this only cost me about 60 or 70 quid for it it had a couple of cosmetic marks on it. it's it got a hell of a lot more cosmetic marks on it from me now scratches and all sorts of stuff but that's kind of fine with me because my guitars tend to be pretty well beaten up but this is how this one sounds <laughs> It's got more thickness than it had with the Telecaster and it's got a little bit more warmth than from the uh, Gear for Music one. Uh, I used this for doing some kind of some tracking, some basic uh, stuff. I was going to use it for some leads, but I don't think the pickups are good enough for the high act active. So some, so I've got a couple other guitars that I'm going to use for some lead work. But that's my little PRS style copy. Uh, we'll leave the bases to the end. Uh, right. So this one, this one's got a kind of an interesting story for me. So this, um, about four years ago, I was on eBay and there was this guy selling these Invader guitars, they were called. So uh, I can see it across the headstock here. And he had four or five different ones. And basically what it appeared to have been is a guy who has made, he's had a sample made for a guitar that he wanted to have built. He had four different types. One, one was a Flying V, one was a Les Paul style called the Orpheus. I think it was the Les Paul. This one was called the Optimus. And basically it is a Telecaster style 
with this little scoop underneath uh, jagged point. It had this really cool kind of flame through uh, style, uh, which I really liked. And actually everything felt really good. He had his own little uh, labeled up invader um, uh, covers put onto humbuckers. They're very, they look like generic humbuckers. Uh, and it's got a decent amount of weight to it. It has a really clean finish all around. And I think I paid about £100 for it. Uh, but I really liked it. It's what I was. I did. I, I also had the Flying V version of it, but I sold the Flying V one off because I never really got on with Flying V's the style. Uh, this needs some work doing to it. It needs a, a full uh, neck of the, the fretboard, needs oil in, etc. But uh, this is how this one sounds, and I haven't tuned it, so this could be interesting. Yeah, that could be very interesting. Uh, so I had prior. I'm just going to do the top two. doesn't have get it. it's not some good big full sound but it has a cool rock tone to it and I did use it for some lead parts <laughs> It's got a nice low action, so it's good for sort of lead guitar sections as well. Uh, but I really like it. It's got a cool look to it. Sorry, Ooh, get rid of that. There we go. Uh, it's got a cool look to it, uh, and one of my favourite guitars visually, anyway. Not necessarily to play. Okay, so some of my older guitars are currently in storage. Uh, but what I do have, while we're looking at Telecasters, we have this one. So this is again from Alan George. A couple here actually from Alan George on this one. Uh, so this is the seven string Telecaster, uh, much much lighter than it's actually lighter than the other guitar, the, the PRS style. Nothing on the headstock. Uh, I believe this one is tuned down to possibly A. Don't think this one's in B. I think the other one, the other seven strings in B. But basically, it's. I, I, yeah, I've used this for a couple of the demos I've recently done. Um, I don't think I've recorded or released anything that's in a set in seven string yet. I think that's all demo based. But let's have a listen to it. We'll play the same riff, but we'll play it in a seven string on the um, the B string. pickups are the kind of very basic standard seven string pickups they have got a lot of mud into them um, feel, they feel very muddy although this is not the effect that I would normally the distortion I use when I work on the seven string stuff so this one's specifically for my standard or D string or D, sorry, when it's in D. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool guitar, it's, it's fun to use, uh, it's all in standard. Yeah, let's go to this one. Right, so this one, this is probably still not my oldest, but one of the oldest. I had this before I did the build kit. So this is my Les Paul. Um, I love this guitar. It's had pick up swap out, so I put in some Dragonfire uh, humbuckers. I just loved the, the, the cap on the top, it's just got a really nice finish to it. Um, it's a lot muddier, heavier tone, um, so this is definitely not something I use really for metal, uh, it's more for a kind of a blues, but it's got a really nice finish to it and it's just a lovely guitar to play, but let's play it. fret bars uh, it's got it's been well set up uh, some of my other guitars could really do with a decent setup uh, but I, again I these are clean and dust as well uh, but yeah lovely guitar to play uh, sits in the rack doesn't get pulled out very often mainly because it's got that lower bluesy tone and when I'm looking for sort of the heavier 
we're, well, we're looking for sort of the more rockier metal tracks. Uh, I want to say it's going to cut through the mix a little bit cleaner. Uh, let's go down to, there's only a few more. Uh, okay, let's do this one. So on eBay, again, a few years ago, um, and I had this phase where I basically was going through eBay and just doing a search where I was filtering it down to ending soonest and cheapest. Because I love to see when there was a bargain or a deal coming through. Uh, and this one popped up and it's basically a kind of Stratocaster guitar with the uh, kind of black sunburst finish. Um, but what I really liked about this one was it was the dual humbuckers with a single coil. It's a Wilkinson single coil. I have no idea about the make of these two humbuckers. I couldn't find any information out about them. But they're fairly old. Um, and what it was is it was basically a guitar repair shop. They'd had the guitar brought in for some work to be done on it and they'd done the work and then the guy basically couldn't afford to pay for it and just said just do what you need to get rid of the guitar so they basically were like okay um we've done a setup on it and so it's well set up but they basically was like well we need to get some money for it so i think i bought it for about 60 pounds plus about 10 pound for uh shipping uh, so i found the headstock so it's, it looks i mean it had something on the headstock uh i've never worked out what quite was on there but it's obviously been sanded off and had a name taken off. So it's like, it's a fairly bog standard 80, 90 pound Stratocaster, but it's had this customization, which I really liked. The thing is, it actually makes the tone sound really cool. Uh, I use this primarily for clean stuff and maybe some blue stuff or other bits like that. But generally I wouldn't use it for metal, but let's see what it sounds like with the same distorted tone. <laughs> Clean, crisp, uh, it's got a nice full tone, it doesn't over distort, whereas you compare it to one of the other guitars I pulled out, it has more of an over distorted tone. Okay, uh, a couple left before the couple of bases that I own. Uh, so let's do this one. Now this is probably out of tune because it was earlier. Uh, I had to re-solder some work on this. So uh, a couple of things about this one. So this was my second kit I ever built. Uh, this is a Harley Benton Les Paul style uh, kit so I've stained it with a crimson purple stain uh, it's got a satin finish uh, never I never sanded this down after the satin finish there's a couple of bobbles and bits but uh, it's it's cool uh, there's a few things I learned from here so there's a few bit issues with the pots that need changing the the, uh, the knobs that are on this are not the knobs that I originally put on it I actually took those off the other day for another kit that I built, so we're, we're going to see that in a second. But I basically wanted to do a new guitar. I, my favourite style of guitar is Les Paul, uh, which we'll see in a second. There's some more of them. Uh, so these knobs are just there so that I can use the guitar still, uh, and they're meant to be black. They were black uh, on there. Uh, although I'm thinking maybe putting silver on there as the rest of the hardware is still silver, but it, they were black. But, uh, yeah, so. It's got a small little kind of Project 42 logo, uh, cheap general tuners, uh, stained uh, nut. Uh, never bother to put in the uh, cover on here, decided to leave that as open. Um, and yeah, so the pickups here are not generic, so these ones I decided to get some Les Paul Studio Classics in. Um, I'm trying to remember, yeah, I think they were 76, could be wrong, I think they were 76, but I paid a lot, I probably paid more for the pickups than I did for the actual guitar itself. Uh, it had its own uh, pot setup system, uh, bought this whole thing separately to, and then reinstalled it onto this guitar. So what I didn't want the generic kind of tone, you, know, you see on the back all the buckle rash dents, that's fine. I, that doesn't bother me because these guitars are just for me. Um, this is my Les Paul style Project 42 um, custom classic I guess. from the tone already it's, it's got a bit more of a bluesier muddier tone than the um than that kind of strato caster style uh it hasn't got the over overdrive of some of the other guitars and it's probably the reason why it doesn't get used as much because again it's not it's sort of something i'd use for more blues rock etc 
Uh, let's do something a bit different. Okay, so this is my newest guitar, uh, as far as pre-purchased. This I bought, I was in a recent video. So this again, I got from Alan George. Now this has a huge story behind this one. So this one's got the goosey, juicy gossip. So a few year and a bit ago, I went to purchase guitar from a company called Bolt Guitars. Uh, and the long and the short, I won't go into the full detail because it's uh, um, those that know Bolt Guitar will probably have had a similar situation. But basically, Bolt Guitar was told that it was shipped, told that it was being sent, and it never arrived. Uh, eventually, uh, after a long, drawn out period, got the money back that I'd spent on it, but found out the guitar had never ever been shipped or never even left China. Uh, so these guitars were then all in China, sitting there. He, Bolt guitars went under, uh, but all the guitars were already been made up. So these guitars were then offered out to some different people. Uh, Alan George picked up a few of them, uh, or put the feelers out around the kind of guitar market about who would be interested. And I'd asked, my original guitar was a seven string, uh, purple, explorer style, but I wanted fan fret, but they hadn't done the fan frets, so they'd never even been made. Uh, but they had this sort of one with a standard neck, and I went, you know what, although I'm not happy about having the bolt head stock, it's... Is something I'm prepared to live with, and it gives me a cool anecdote from it. But I got this seven string, uh, and it was great, it was only 150 quid. Um, so I was really happy with that. Um, and this is basically what it sounds like. If you compare that to what the previous seven string, which was from the same, I don't know if I think it was actually the same factory, this has just got a lot more from time. And I think some of that has got down to different pots in here. Uh, the pickups look pretty much the same, but maybe slightly different around. But it's got a nice finish. You can see how the neck's just actually all nicely curved into it. You can't really see any of the joins. There's no joins at the back of the neck. So it's actually been finished with a really good standard. And for 150 quid, I really can't complain about it. And I'm using that one a lot more for different tracks at the moment. Uh, well, we've got two guitars left. Well done if you stayed up with this. Right, so let's do this one. This one, so this one's got a few different setups than what I previously have. So this is something I've had for a couple of years now. I uh, had it made for me, uh, so it's another Les Paul style, it's got the old Nothing Game logo because I wanted something that I decided to represent my period of playing in the band Nothing Game, uh, and I wanted a guitar that would be do something a bit different, so there's a few things I wanted, I wanted something with a Floyd Rose, now none of the other guitars have got Floyd Rose, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Floyd Rose, but I wanted one just to give me an option, so that I had something to wear with Floyd pickups uh they had some generic kind of uh knockoff type pickups in before so i got these swapped out and these have actually got the zach wild emg set on so it has the battery compartment on the back so this is actually wired up with those uh, changed the control knobs for these lovely little skulls uh which is kind of cool uh main problem with this one is it just struggles for tuning so this should be in d uh i don't it does have locking nuts but i don't tend to use them because of tuning it gives me a nightmare but i've got some work to do on this one around setup but let's see what it sounds like <laughs> See, I like the tone, specifically the main difference you're getting out of here is because it's a uh, they're active pickups rather than passive, you're getting a lot more crispness over the overall tone. But I mean, you can see here there's some issues with the fret uh, down here on the little fret, you can see these little marks where my finger is. Uh, they were some of the cosmetics. So I originally had this made for me for about £250, I think it was made. Um, I ended up because of cosmetic issues, I, I basically said to them I wasn't happy because uh, were it wasn't just there, there was a few other little marks on the guitar at different places, so I was kind of upset about the whole thing. And in the, in the end, I think I ended up paying £50 in total for everything, and then just obviously switching out the pickup, so uh, that was kind of cool. Uh, now we can talk about basses. Before I go to the last guitar I've got, I wanted to do the bass. So uh, this could be interesting. So this is the very first bass. 
I had this is a stag base. I've had this now for around about 20 years. I have changed the strings in that time, but not very often because I don't use it very often. But I do use this for recording. Uh, I had a lot of issues with wiring issues. Uh, so you can still see that I've got the back cavity is still open. Because uh, I had to do some issues with new pickups and stuff like that. But let's see. Uh, I should really switch this to a, uh, uh, a bass setup. But here we go. I can't play without uh, with fingers. I really just use bass as guide tracks for what I'm working on. Uh, but I don't tend to use, sorry, the guitar's falling over. I'm not gonna do my acoustic. Uh, I don't tend to use basses as an actual bass player. I'm one of those guitarists that has a bass purely to add some weight to your guitar tracks. Uh, basses can be very underappreciated for what they add. Okay, um, second to last guitar. So this was another eBay find. So before I show you what it is, uh, so a six string, uh, and basically I was on I was on this uh, eBay, and again doing my usual search for sort of weird and wacky cheap guitars, stuff that's just quite unusual and quite fun to do because I don't really mind spending the sm small amounts of money on sort of wacky things. And this came up again. It was about sixty quid in the end. I paid for it, and it was someone basically saying they had a court. Um, and it looks like it was a three and a half or a court. I think it's called a court junior. It should be a court junior four string bass. And they decided to make it into a six string. Yes, that is correct. It is a junior bass that they made into a six string. And I just kind of felt for 60 quid, I just had to have it just to see, just for the novelty of it. Um, so few issues with it uh, you can't tune it down as low as you can with the stand five string because you just can't get gauges so everything's tuned higher um, so I think if I remember right this is in D so but this is basically what it sounds like Uh, and that's basically my my court uh, little mini base. Uh, I'm still haven't found a single use for it yet, but at some point I'm sure I will. Okay, so the, out of love, from my part one, this is the last guitar that is actually in the house. The rest are in storage, which I will get around to. So this is the very last guitar I have. Um, so this is a recent build. Uh, so I built this one. About a week ago i call this the icon uh so the cap says in memory never forget um, it's basically designed to look like kind of a very relic old guitar uh, i wanted it to be black hardware so it took longer to build because it all the kits because it's been based on a kit it was based uh on a standard les paul wooden kit very light wood and i kind of wanted to do something where I could recognize a lot of the icons of bands or musicians and it started off really well uh, I had some really nice engravings done and then some of the engravings got a little bit off so the one at the bottom there around the knobs was originally meant to be Mr Hetfield uh, and I lost some of the face definition that I liked I've got the Zach Wilde over here on the the bottom Chris Cornell at the bottom uh, Lemmy in the middle uh, I've got Randy Rhodes up in the up here and then of course uh, the Abbott brothers above. So this is called the Icon. Um, so I built this one from scratch. This has got uh, some real high octave uh, Warman pickups in here that I put in. Uh, love the guitar. It's got this cool, it's generally just got this cool finish to it. Makes it look like an old whiskey barrel. Uh, haven't used this for anything yet, but I am planning to at some point in the future. But this is how, hopefully this is in tune, but uh, this is what this one is like. And that 
that is the icon. This is basically the knobs that I took off the other Les Paul purple one. Um, and that's the current guitars that I have in stock in the house. Now, there are probably about another 15 guitars sitting in storage. Uh, these are my f more favourite ones, I guess. Uh, what else have I got in there? I've got... I have got my oldest, oldest guitar uh, that I had for about 25 years now. Uh, that is in storage. That's my um, Aria Pro 2 TS400. Um, that is, that's a great guitar, great sound. Uh, it needs some work done to it, but it's a great guitar. Uh, I've got a few other Les Pauls in there. I've got the I've got a green variety version of the, the the red one, which is really nice. Uh, I've got a few other little weird random builds of guitars that were put for cosmetic reasons of bits of leftover guitars, uh, some wall display guitars and other stuff like that. So I will do another video if you guys want it to show you some of the other guitars. But I hope you found it interested uh, as you've watched videos of mine and you've seen the guitars in the background. So I hope that you like the guitars. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And that, of course, is how Dave does it.